Yes, this is my 10th year. I started wow. teaching a class called Free Speech in the Workplace. And then because the students really liked my teaching and wanted me to teach more classes as well as the department, I got a second class, which is the most controversial. Uh, and it's ironic. It's called Race, Sex, and Politics, Free Speech on Campus. Of wow. course, the administration had no idea at that time, uh, you know, the way I would teach the class or that would have never been approved. Uh, I and then the third class um, uh, I taught and I still teach is called Entertainment Law. That's one of my specialties, Entertainment Law. And then the last class, because I was a uh, very good debater when I went to UCLA, similar to debate, it's called uh, uh, Abortion, Gun Control, the Death Penalty, Arguing Contemporary Social Issues. So I currently teach four classes. What's most rewarding to me is being able to be a positive influence in uh, these students' lives. And I feel a deep connection to these these students in particular because I went to UCLA when I was 17 to 21. And mm -hmm. the, the students at UCLA, and the students uh, uh, you know, all over the country, uh, I, I know are special. Uh, but UCLA happens to get uh, extremely intelligent students there. You know, they're lucky in that over 100,000 students apply to come to UCLA. So they really can cherry pick some of the very best, the brightest uh, but brightest students, and we have wonderful international students as well at UCLA, so uh, I feel very honored uh, uh, to teach at UCLA and, and, and really to be a positive influence in their lives. As a conservative professor, do you feel that it has really negatively affected ab your ability to teach freely in that environment? Actually, someone sits in my class, uh, it's an extremely balanced presentation. The, to the last part of your question, my own teaching style, uh, there's nothing the administration can do on this campus or any campus uh, that I would teach uh, in the United States that would limit my teaching style. There's no threats, uh, there's no threats that can be made to me, uh, um, no you know, pain of any type of discipline which would ever get me to, uh, to change um, the way I teach. What caused the media to label you as such then? Well, it's because the reason UCLA has taken the steps they have in the last uh, uh, few months to get rid of me is based upon uh, the message that is in part portrayed in my class. So, for example, the first day you're in any of my classes, I'm very clear. I do not believe in safe spaces, trigger warnings. I don't eschew microaggressions. Uh, these are all... Uh, uh, points that the left uh, expects professors uh, to adopt. So, you know, right, so right from the very inception, the first day if one takes my class, it, it is uh, the principles or the teaching styles antithetical to, way, to the way um, uh, the progressives uh, want you to teach. Uh, and then, my, uh, and, and then uh, as I say, my class is very balanced. Uh, you're not going to hear uh, diatribes against Donald Trump. Uh, there are certain things that I think that Trump, that President Trump does that make sense, uh, certain things that don't. For example, when Donald Trump talks about burning the flag, uh, I take him to task on that. Uh, we have every right to burn the, uh, the flag in this country. You may not like it, uh, but you should support uh, uh, vehemently uh, Americans' right uh, to, to, to express themselves, even in ways that you find to be uh, offensive. Uh, so my class is very, very balanced, but... They're already getting, students are already getting one side. I mean, I don't have to repeat the other side. Students are, you know, for example, the minimum wage issue. You know, all, I already know all the way almost all the students think. They all think that minimum wage uh, laws are great. We need to have the $15 minimum wage. But nobody's ever explained to them any arguments uh, contrary uh, uh, to why uh, the minimum wage should not be uh, 12 or $15, and then I take time to explain these points, not to tell them how to think, but to make them think. So let's talk for a little bit about the free speech issue on campuses. Obviously, there's been a lot of examples, I think a lot in California specifically, but kind of all over as well, where a lot of conservative students, teachers, whatever, have really been shut down due to the very liberal-leaning colleges. So is there a way for us to start fighting back? What is the first step there? Well, the first step is donors should not contribute money to schools that don't comply with basic values that Americans hold. 
Okay, and you know, one of those is schools need to be marketplaces of ideas, mm-hmm. and people should be hired to teach in you know in all positions, um, irrespective of ideology. So students that run afoul uh, of, of the uh, schools that run afoul of these basic tenets, donors should not contribute money. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, that's that's the real way. Uh, to go after schools, you know, okay. President Trump could do something, uh, and we can stop uh, uh, funding, we can stop giving federal funds mm-hmm. uh, to schools that run afoul of Title IX, uh, you know, or, 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 you know, or, or basic uh, First Amendment rights. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then students have access to the media. The media, you know, the media is very powerful. And as you see, even in, in my in my instance, I'm just one teacher at one school, but this issue, um, you know, has has. Uh, you know, rung true uh, all across the nation. People are very upset at what UCLA is doing. And as I've said, what's happening, and I think you said it as well, it's a microcosm of a macrocosm. Mm -hmm. This is happening, this is happening throughout the country. My question would be then, in your vast experience, what would your advice be to students on campus who are fighting for their free speech and to not be shut down by the bigger colleges? Well, they should, They need to go to a lawyer. I mean, they, okay. they need to fight and they need to go to a lawyer. Uh, primarily, uh, FIRE is a very good organization. Okay. Uh, F-I-R-E, you can look them up. But FIRE doesn't take all cases, as I understand, but FIRE is very good. They have uh, uh, very good contacts with the media, and then they try to find lawyers in the local area to fight for students. Okay. Students can find... Uh, lawyers like myself uh, who would be willing to uh, to take these matters, but students need to understand their rights. What happens quite often, and they, I, you know, I get it, I was 18, 19 years old, mm-hmm. you don't know your rights and you get scared. Um, most people don't think to run to a lawyer. And, and they think they're willing to take some you know, small level of discipline, you know, lest they be suspended or expelled for long periods of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so students need to know their rights. Uh, they need to know when their rights are being vi- uh, being violated, and they need to know that they do have uh, avenues to fight. So uh, legal outlets, uh, the local, you know, their local papers. Um, you know, the media can be a tremendous spotlight. Um, you know, to disinfect uh, uh, the attempts by the administration to trample on students' rights. We're focused mainly on free speech, as I see the free speech. Uh, you know, it, it is a it's a hotbed topic, mm-hmm. but what I see on the college campus, the scariest issue for any student is the Title IX kangaroo court proceedings. And maybe it's for another day. Uh, this is you know your, your podcast segment, but that is uh, this is what every millennial needs to be worried about. That is a college student or a graduate student that's subject to Title IX. You could be on the E. You can be a four point, I don't know how high your GPA is, 4.6 student, 4.0, you get all A pluses. And you could be the potential valedictorian. On the day that you graduate, somebody could file a Title IX complaint against you. It can be lodged against you. And it could be not even your, uh, your ex boyfriend could lodge it against you, or you could lodge it against your ex boyfriend. Uh, just because, you know, you've now graduated, you're going to Harvard Law School and you say, no, I don't want to date you. It's just retaliatory. Uh, there's no basis, but just out of spite, your ex, your ex boyfriend lover files a complaint. Hmm. The administration is going to freeze. They are going to freeze your ability to graduate. Your whole life is going to be put on. It can happen. The very day you're going to graduate, you can be the very top in your class, mm-hmm. which then is going to have the effect of you not being able to go, most likely, to the Harvard Law School. And then it gets into the, the, the territory, which is very, very scary. Your now whole fate is going to be determined, not by a jury of your peers, not with real evidence, but in a kangaroo court where there's no lawyer, there's no right to, cross-examin- uh, to cross-examination, there's no entitlement uh, to certain evidence. There's no entitlement to ask questions. And the, deter- the determiner is most likely going to be a single person in the Title IX department that has no training uh, in the law. Very frightening. And, the, and these administrations have an incentive in these proceedings to mm-hmm. fight against the accused. Your whole, life, your whole, really, your whole life can go up in smoke. Think about it. If you get thrown out of the school for committing sexual, sexual assault, sexual harassment, what school's going to take you? I don't imagine anyone would. Okay. Well, this is a nightmare. This is an, yeah. this is a millennial nightmare. 
Uh, and most millennials don't think about it because, the, and, and if you're talking about the state, I don't, I don't know if you're in California, you're talking about our state, it's even more complicated because it's even scarier for millennials because you realize in this state and in New York also, we have what's called affirmative consent laws. We no protections, no uh, almost no due process protection given to somebody accused. So okay. for millennials, this is this is a huge concern for any millennial that's going to college. Good to know. Duly noted. Uh, the last question I always ask people, because we are the Millennial Review, is do you have any advice for millennials fighting for whatever? You, you said already the um, going to a lawyer for free speech on campus, but just in general. Well, actually, my biggest advice, I didn't know, I have a lot of advice for millennials. I see the, I biggest, <laughs> I have, I, the biggest mistake I see that millennials make is uh, inappropriate use of social media. Okay. Whether that's your uh, emails, texting, Twitter, Facebook posts, millennials don't seem to understand that all of these communications someday can come back to haunt you. Absolutely. Uh, so millennials just don't see that. They don't understand that schools look at these in making decisions to enroll you. Hmm. That Employers look at these uh, types of posts in making decisions uh, whether to hire you, whether or not to retain you. Um, so students just don't just don't think uh, in putting these types in these types of messages. And they, people want to go up on screeds against uh, uh, President Trump without thinking uh, on Facebook, without thinking or or, uh, or President Obama, whoever it is, whatever the scenario is, without thinking of the consequences. Uh, that someday somebody will be looking at that and, you know, they may have alienated 50 or 60 percent, um, you know, of the people they don't want to alienate. Uh, so it's those types of posts. Uh, it's also pictures. You know, you, you're a college student and you want to go to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, wherever college students go. Uh, go and you, that's fine. You're with your friends and I get it. Students drink. That's OK guess which is over 21 but don't take the photo of being topless and with two bottles of beers and then post it that's gonna that's someone's gonna find it even if it's private yeah. so that's what i see as the biggest mistake is uh, uh misuse of uh, social media okay well thank you so much for your time we really appreciate it um and for all of your your knowledge on the subject. Um, I appreciate you having me, and if any of your millennial listeners ever need any help from me, um, I'm happy to do whatever I can uh, to help you or your listeners.